interacting. So thanks a lot, folks, for joining in. We see 100 plus people in today's session. We are discussing about the decoding the stock market dip. Financial wellness sessions are mostly like the most requested ones. And hence, we are doing this session to understand the current market situation. And to understand, like, I'm also struggling where to invest in FDs, mutual funds, or keep that in the safe savings account itself. So before we start, we wanted to introduce Nova as well. Nova is an employee wellness platform with a core focus around center, focus around health insurance. We also help your organizations in employee well-being and in variety of wellness programs and fitness and mental health. So today we have Kanika and Nikhil. Uh, both of them are the co-founders of Upside.ai. Kanika has been investing her in, entire career in investing. Uh, before moving to public markets, she has been working with Mayfield, VC Fund, and Credit Suisse and e EY. Uh, Nikhil has a deep expertise in all things optimization. He worked for the Credit Suisse uh, in the Algo trading team, Microsoft Research NLP team, and the IBM. Uh, so just two things, folks. During the session, if you have any question, feel free to drop in the chat. Uh, all of you are, you, I am assuming you can unmute yourself, but would would, would be best if you don't, uh, so that the session flow could be well. And just feel free to ask a lot of questions. In the end, we'll do a lot of Q&As as well. And what we have seen so far, Q, financial sessions have a lot of Q&As, so keep your uh, questions ready for that. Uh, over to you, Kanika and Nikhil. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Devanch, and uh, thanks for organizing this. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, you know, very happy to see 135 people here. Um, and Nikhil and I will talk through it. We'll keep it short so that everyone has enough time for questions. Uh, but but uh, and and you know, we're going to use uh, a presentation uh, to to make the points that we want to make today. Um, and just yep. Great. Uh, I hope. It's up for everyone. I, I think uh, Devan just up introduced yeah. us, but you know, I'm Kanika. Uh, Nikhil will uh, Nikhil maybe say hi to everyone. Uh, hi, to everyone. Sort of taking this over. Yeah. And uh, you know, we're co-founders of uh, Upside AI. Uh, we essentially, you know, use technology to invest in the markets. Um, so, so think we have, uh, you know, some reason to talk about this topic. Um, maybe we'll start with something simple and. Uh, you know, let's ask you guys, right? Um, so, so this uh, I'm going to put up an actual live situation in the market about two years or so at some point in the past, and let's try and figure out you know when you should have entered, right? And 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 see what was a good time. So, okay, market's gone up a bit. Uh, it's about thirty percent for the year. Um, should you be coming in now? Uh, you know, maybe we can like put up a poll or something and figure out already up thirty percent. Is this a good time? What do you guys think? Okay, lots of lots of weights. Okay, lots. It's evening becoming 50, 50, 50 very quickly. Right? Evening out, but yeah, <laughs> two thirds, three thirds. Yeah. Right. Forty. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is what happened. So whoever said no weight actually lost a bit because it went up yeah. another thirty percent. Yeah. Okay. Now what do you do? Question two. Should we come in now? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Okay, now tilt is set, setting in. Now people want to wait. It's gone up too much. No, no. Again, the bulls are coming back in. <laughs> okay, so we're roughly at 60-40. So what similar, happened from here? Similar. Oops. Okay, it's down 25%. Uh, let, let's run the poll again. Should we come in now? Uh, everyone's uh, liking this trajectory, right? Uh, you have a reasonable connection. You're able to, there's a little bit of recency bias. You're saying, Achha, it did go up at some point. Maybe it can. Yeah. Very clearly now, 65% are saying come in. Yeah. Okay. It's down another 12. Oops. What do we do now? I think wrong <laughs> Is this again. A good time? I, I think our audience has been wrong <laughs> almost every time. Yeah. At every single point. Mm. Okay, now though definitely we should come in, right? 80%. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, cool. Um, there's a little bit of recovery that's happened. Right? Pretty um, much flat. Not bad. Yeah. So now we're back to levels from D, right? We fell a bit, but came back. So everyone's decision to come in at point D was pretty good. Oh no. <laughs> Again, is, no. This is live, huh? no, This is an actual market scenario. I've not made yeah. this up. Yeah. Now we're down 64% from B. Are you supposed to come in at this point? No, everyone's convinced. <laughs> right? 
Okay, so actually it's lower. If we were at eighty percent at point C, it's fallen to seventy-four uh, percent after a bigger drawdown, right? Now it's not going anywhere. It's been a while. Nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. Now what, right? I, I, do you see how many different points you could have come in, could not have come in at? It's it's impossible. Um, frankly, from the poll, it looked like there was <laughs> we were wrong a lot. Yeah. Uh, probably not wrong to come in once the market falls a lot. That's true. But uh, this timing the bottom basically means there's only one point in that entire two-year cycle where your answer was absolutely right to come in at that point, right? And this is benefit of hindsight, uh, which is kind of the point we're making uh, today, which is you you can't time the markets. You have to come in at A, B, C, D, E, F, every single point. Um, you don't actually know, you know, what where that graph is going next, right? Um, you go back in March 2020, and and you know we could this is by the way 2007 to nine, right? Uh, the worst period uh, possible, and this is exactly what happened. So instead, you know, if you just put in a hundred bucks every day into the market, uh, you're probably done fine, right? Um, it would have been a lot more steady. Uh, you're done fine. Uh, the orange line is how your money would have grown. Uh, it looks boring. But it's probably the best way to have actually uh, invested your money uh, slowly and steadily. So, uh, wish it was a cooler answer than yes, this is exactly how you time it and this is how you should come in. Uh, but uh, much, much harder. And uh, just putting in a hundred bucks every day is probably the most smart thing to do. So the webinar is uh, over. Actually, we, we've concluded. We, the answer <laughs> to your it. question is <laughs> it's done. Uh, see you guys next time. Uh, so, so, but yeah, so the point is, uh, and we'll again go through uh, more details, of course. Uh, short answer is that you can't time it. That's really the truth of it, right? And this is what we see in this uh, chart also, right? Where we see these are investor returns and the returns generated by the what the instruments the investors have put money in, right? So the mutual funds, it's the same mutual fund return, right? And investors who have put those money into that same invest, uh, mutual fund. So the mutual fund have returned 19%, but people who have invested in those same mutual funds have got only 12.5% out of it. So you're saying like, hold on, what's going on? It's the same thing, right? Like I'm measuring the same thing. Why is there such a big gap? And it's the biggest gap, of course, in equity funds. For, for hybrid funds, the gap is lower. And for debt funds, it's even lower. And the sort of the gap really exists. Uh, if you go to the next slide, that there is... There is there's investment return and there is an investor return and there's always a behavior gap because what we as humans, what we can't help do is FOMO at the top and panic at the bottom when it should be the exact opposite, right? And the whole point is what are those tops and what are those bottoms in an absolute sense? We don't know. Right, right now we are in the midst of a fall, right? From our October tops. Is it going to fall 20% more? Is it going to fall another 20%? No one knows. But people panic and take out the money at the wrong times, right? Everyone, and we, we are seeing some of those comments, right? No, no, you need to profit book at certain times. Oh, no, no, you need to enter at some times. How do you know when? A, what are those times? You can only know in hindsight, right? You don't know going forward what's going to happen. And this is something which, again, Warren Buffett's quote, and there are several Warren Buffett quotes can, that we can use at this point. Investment is very simple, but it's not easy. And th this is exactly why, right? People can't stick to their these simple and easy rules. Yeah. So next slide. Yeah. And why is that? Right. We, uh, we just uh, went through it in a very, uh, you know, there's a microcosm on, on slide one where we did those polls, but those polls essentially capture those biases, right? There is, uh, you know, and there's a whole bunch of them. We, we don't need to go into all of them, but, but, you know, there's loss aversion is uh, probably the hardest where once you make a decision and your portfolio is underwater, you put in a hundred bucks at 80 rupees, it is very difficult for humans to realize they made that mistake, book the 20 rupee loss and then put it to work somewhere else, right? Because you're like, in, you. oftentimes there's a lot of doubling down that also happens. Uh, there's actually a study where um, your losses affect you two times more than the same amount of profit. So you made a profit, you'll be happy. If you lost the same amount of money, you'll be 2x sad, right? Uh, which, which is bizarre when you actually think of it in terms of math. And, and similarly, right, FOMO is such a big deal right now. Uh, everyone, you had friends who made money over the last two years. That's what herding is, where you, you think, Acha, everyone's done all of this. Now, now I should also be doing it. And then you're at that point trying to time the tops and the bottoms and say, okay, oh shit, I, I didn't come in when market went up 30%. Now I've lost the next 30%. Now now there's it's fallen. You know, I came in at 
point B, but now it's fallen 25% from there. What do I do? So it's just a lot of biases that end up resulting in that gap you see of what you could actually do if you're just stuck in a fund versus what you actually end up doing. Right. Um, and, and that's why, you know, there's just some basic stuff that you can just do that shock proofs your finances in many ways, right? Makes it anti-fragile, makes sure that nothing crazy is happening. One is, of course, you know, in terms of debt, uh, credit card debt is a, a clear no-no. Um, anytime you have a lot of debt, start off paying off the most expensive debt first, move your way down uh, to lower and lower, uh, you know, pair utne felao jitti chadar hai, et cetera, et cetera. Um, insurance, don't get ULIPS, don't get endowment, just get a term insurance, right? What you're trying to solve for is worst case scenarios. Insurance is not an investment product. Insurance is supposed to solve for your downside and that's it, right? Um, so just simple term insurance helps. Similarly, health insurance is the most critical thing you can do to avoid situations where, you know, uh, you're, you're in dire financial straits. So two types of insurance you should be getting, uh, term and health, no endowment, no ELSS, uh, nothing that your neighborhood auntie is selling as the next best LIC plan. Uh, none of that, uh, the, the math never adds up. And we're saying uh, right? this despite, Make sure that, uh, although we, we are on a NOAA benefits uh, sort of webinar, we would say this to other sorry, people. Well. Yeah, there are no conflict of interest. Yeah. This is actually what you should be doing. <laughs> yeah, correct. Um, make sure you have six months uh, of money in FD. Uh, or, or some form of liquidity. Uh, actually, India has about 80% of its savings in FD. Um, you're losing money there at that point. Uh, that, that is also not right. Uh, just six months is uh, all you should hold in FD. The rest should follow some sort of sensible asset allocation, right? And we'll talk about what we mean by this. And, uh, I, you know, right at the beginning, I think Devansh was asking everyone what you invest in. Um, and we saw a whole bunch of different things like st only stocks or only FDs or 50% uh, stocks and 30% crypto. Uh, so, so you know, uh, <laughs> uh, stocks only go up, uh, but sometimes they don't. Um, so, so we'll just maybe talk about what to do or how do you follow a sensible asset allocation over the next few slides. So, uh... Yeah, okay. So somebody just asked, right? Uh, oh, is gold return inverse to stocks? And this is this chart is somewhat telling you the story, right? Over the last 20 years or so, these are the various asset classes. There's equity, there is world equity, there is debt, and then there is gold, right? And how each of them have done every year. And what you'll find is key, the heat map is all over the place. Every year starting, I do not know, Kaneka doesn't know, the World Bank chief doesn't know, the RBI chief doesn't know what's going to happen. Right? Literally, no. And definitely the pundits on the business news channels don't know okay, what's going to happen the next year, right? Which assets are going to do well, which assets are not going to do well. And the point yeah. is that every year there is some winner, there is some loser, right? So it's a rotating cast. Overall, there are, of course, some trends, some things do well, some things don't. But year to year, it's very, very difficult to figure out what is what, right? So can you, yeah, so look at equity, for example, right? It's a huge winner in uh, 03, but in 08, it's the 60% drawdown. So can for to get the 140% return, you also need to stomach the 60% drawdown. And Kanika just sp uh, spoke about that, right? The drawdowns hurt a lot more. Everybody's a long-term thinker. Everybody's a long-term investor. But when it actually comes to it, can you actually stomach those losses day to day, right? And then uh, the next slide, let's take a very, very simple portfolio. Let's just invest into all of these things equally. Not think, right? Just equally invest in all of those things. And what you get is the portfolio on the rightmost side, which by design is going to look yellow. Yellow means somewhere in the middle. It's going to do something stable somewhere in the middle. It's never going to be, you know, the winner. It's never going to be the loser. It'll be something stable. You'll sleep better at night. So that's like a very, just a visual look at even how a simple asset allocation, where you just invest equally into different things, gives you some somewhat more stable return, right? You'll never get the 140%, but you'll also not to get the minus 60% in your portfolio. Yeah. And and what's the point of this all, right? What are you trying to do with your portfolio? Are you, are you a fund manager? Do you need to be the best return in every single year? No, right? You just, you've made a bunch of money. You need your money to compound well, and you need to sleep well at night, right? And, and which is why you need to asset allocate because, you know, you know chasing the, the best asset is takes you back to that slide we showed you where there's a big gap between what you'll actually do versus what the product will do, which will be your behavior will drive, uh, you know, actually suboptimal returns and you won't sleep well at night because there'll be so much FOMO that will kick in, right? So, so just understand that the goal is not to be the best. Uh, you know, you're not benchmarking your life against 
uh, your friend's life. You just want to make sure your life does well. And that means, ke, you know, can I just buy a little nifty, some mid caps? Uh, you know, of course, you can't buy the MSCI world, but now you can buy a whole bunch of, uh, you know, US uh, stocks, uh, US mutual funds, uh, buy a little bit of debt, buy some gold, split it across the board. And, and you know, you, you'll do fine, uh, which, which is really what you're trying to do. Yeah. So again, these same asset classes that we showed in a sort of visual manner, if you just look at the rolling one year returns, right, starting from 2003, last 20 years. So prima facie, you look at it, Nifty is giving you 18 and a half percent on average. So why won't I just invest in Nifty or maybe Nifty midcap, right? Basically stocks. And that's what we saw when uh, Devansh asked in the beginning, right? Most of us saw the answers being mutual funds or stocks, which is sort of effectively the same thing, right? If it's equity mutual funds. So why not put all your money in stocks, right? It's clearly giving you the best return out of all of these asset classes. But then you have to look at the minimum returns, right? The minus 60%. If you look at your probability of success, right? In Nifty, it's only 80%. But if you look at debt, for example, it's suddenly 100% that you're always going to make money. But then you're only making 7%. So it's like, a, it's, it's a complicated situation, right? There's not one obvious answer what you should be doing. Right. And if you go down, if you look at the standard deviation, sharp ratios, again, we won't go into too much technical details, but the point is you can't just look at return. You also have to look at the risk that you're taking for that return. Right. And both those things have to uh, sync up. And when you look at that sharp ratio number, which is in effect trying to do that, you see that equity at the end of the day is not that great. And that's pretty, it's pretty much on, you know, par with gold, slightly worse than debt, in fact. And this is just yeah. when you're looking at one year returns, right. Rolling one year returns. Next. Wait, yeah, sorry, we should explain what this means. So yeah. uh, what is rolling one year? What yeah. have you done, Nikhil? Yeah. yeah, so rolling one year just means ki, I don't I don't know when the date when I'm investing or somebody else is investing or somebody else is investing, right? So I assume on first Jan I invested, I look at my returns for the next year. Somebody else invested on second Jan, he invested for a year. Somebody else invested on third Jan, and then he invested for a year. So I take average of all these one year ka returns, right? So I because from 2003 it, till 2022, 2022, right? Uh, 2021, 22, basically the yeah. 20 years yeah. of time frame, right? So over all those possible one year periods that could have been invested in, these were the average returns, right? And yes. uh, yeah. yeah, next. And also sharp ratio is essentially your return for each measure of risk you take, yeah. right? It's like uh, X return per unit of risk is how you define sharp ratio. It's, it's an important measure. Uh, people don't talk about it enough. Uh, and, and that is how you need to be looking at. So the higher it is, you, you did better on a risk adjusted basis, right? So, so debt in many ways, uh, look at it, right? 0.68 is way higher than uh, equity. But, but again, at some point you, you'll figure out, okay, I don't mind taking more risk, uh, even if, uh, uh, because I can generate more returns. And now when you look at the rolling three year periods, right? So now you suddenly see instead of the minus 50, minus 60 that you were looking at earlier, which was, by the way, the 2008 crisis, right? Somebody asked, where did that come from? That happened in 2008. And even in 2020, we had a minus 30% during the Corona crash, right? So now yeah. if you look at- So this whole... is basically, Abhishek, uh, if you came in on, say, 1st Jan 2008, and that for that year, your return would have been minus 58%. So that's the worst one-year rolling period return. That's what we mean. And uh, now if you look at over three years, now suddenly the minimum numbers are a lot better, right? It's only minus 7% for Nifty. For Medcap, it's only minus 12%. There is still a probability that you won't make money over three years, right? But the probability is way higher. So if you just compare it with the one-year numbers that we just saw, look at the sharp number, right? Look at the probability of success. That's why when you go to all these pundits keep talking about long-term, long-term, why it's important to look at it over three years, five years, and not just one year, right? Because one year, may, there's so much volatility. But over three years, things normalize. And the longer period you go, it will normalize even more and more, right? So now instead of 80% probability of a positive return, you have a 95% probability. Your sharp ratios that you were looking at, instead of 0 0.46, 0 0.44, now it's 0 0.69, right? So that's why you, it's more, it's important to look at all of these returns over longer periods of time, rather than stressing over year to year what's happening. Because year to year, there is so much volatility, things keep changing, you know? Right now, markets are down, th things look gloomy. That doesn't mean you suddenly take out all the money, you know, sit on cash. And then when the markets recover, then you are regretting it. Right. And then when markets go up again, then you enter again at the top of the market. Right. So the whole idea is to stay, stick, stick with it for a long period of time. Right. So now let's just extend this out. Right. And say, okay, take it. Uh, we, we got it. The, the bottom of the points we've made so far, we said, um, you need to hold for longer periods of time. And it's very difficult to figure out when you should be coming in. Uh, right. If you are being doing both of those things, chalo, you're doing a little better. 
But now let's expand that to say, okay, you're not only going to buy equity. Um, you should be buying a little bit of everything. Okay, let's put some money in large caps, a little bit on mid caps, um, you know, in debt, uh, to your short term, uh, you know, medium term, little bit of gold, etc. You put if out of 100 rupees, you put money in each of these and then you forget about it. Okay, you don't do anything. How, what are your returns looking like? So for the next year, um, you know, average. Again, all of these averages are, you know, the last 20 years we've, we've done rolling and tried to figure out how would you do on average over those periods. So you do about 15% or so, uh, you know, three years about 13, five years about 12%. Um, and, and then look at your sharps, right? They're consistently improving. And here you've done nothing. You've just made this allocation and then you've just let it run. So what happens is that every year, this 30 keeps moving. It'll keep inching up because equity does a little bit more and the, the allocation of the others will keep falling. Right. That's what's happening. Uh, and that's not great from an asset allocation perspective, because now suddenly it's it, it's moving away from, you know, risk adjusted returns. Now, let's instead fix this every year, go back and, you know, rejig it back to 30 percent. So if Nifty from 30 percent over that year fell to 25 percent, I'll move money from something else and put it back into Nifty 100. So that Nifty is back to 30 percent. How does that do? Now. If you see, uh, the averages move up a lot more, right? Now look at my five-year numbers. I'm doing 13% and more importantly, the probability of being positive is, is way higher, even over a one-year period. If I'm able to rejig it, my sharp ratios have jumped a lot, right? Um, positive probability of a plus 5% year is 99.7%, right? Uh, over a five-year period. So, so this is what happens if you're just... Going back and fixing your allocation, this means it's not a lot of headache. You don't have to do this constantly. You don't have to think every day to make a decision. It's very um, taxing mentally to decide every day what to do with your money. But once a year is a decision, you can definitely uh, try making. Right? Uh, uh, sorry, Nikhil, anything else? You yeah, think? yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this is, again, this is just a very naive uh, fixed plan, right? You're not saying, ki, I'll try and time it, equity cup, karun, debt cup, karun. Just stick to, you know, 40, 45% equity, 40, 45% uh, debt and remaining in gold and just stick to that plan. You don't look at what the market is doing up, down, left, right. Don't try and time that. You just create a plan and stick to it. And once a year, you rebalance it. That's all you need to do. And you're guaranteed to make very good returns over a long period of time. Definitely better than your FD returns, right? Which is what most of us end up doing. We are lazy. We just keep the money in. Some, some of us are even lazier. Just keep it in savings account, right? So instead of doing that, just have one simple plan, right? Yeah. So, uh, so sorry, there were a couple of questions that are live. I, we can just take them. One is, uh, uh, you know, what is sharp? Just to explain this again, uh, a sharp ratio is your return per unit of risk you take. So it's risk adjusted. So higher it is, that means for all the risk you took, you did a little better. Uh, right? That's what it means. And... Um, why do returns improve with rebalancing? Exactly the point we're making, which is that uh, you know everything does well in different periods of time. You can't predict what does well at what point, and therefore following just an asset allocation means you're giving things, uh, you know, uh, the the probability or the the weights you're assigning uh, is uh, you know constant. Uh, th that quilt that we showed you right at the beginning, right? Where we said, okay, okay if you were just to do equal weighted, you would do reasonably well. It's kind of extending that forward here. Basically, the golden that's rule, what we of, mean. That's golden what... rule of investment is diversification. Don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's what you're saying. Ki I want to have diversified, thoda equity, thoda debt, thoda gold, and keep it like that. That's simple rule. Follow that and you'll be, again, sleep safe, uh, soundly at night, and make money at the same time. right? And again, yeah. uh, I think there are lots of questions. Maybe we'll catch up at the end with the Q&A. Let's just sort of... Correct. Correct. Right. Um, and, and, you know, we've talked a lot about what to do and, you know, there are these four or five uh, types of assets we're saying, but what will you actually buy? Right. Uh, I think this is very important. Um, and and uh, we're just covering mota mota what we think is good to do. Um, so one within equity, uh, you know, direct stocks has become, lots of us were sitting at home, we added a lot of direct stocks to our portfolio. Um, it's not great if you're doing it by yourself, unless you are a professional investor or you know how to invest, don't do it on tips. Don't do it for short term. Don't trade. Um, I think Nik uh, Nikhil Kamath was talking about, right? I think 95, 99% of traders lose money. Uh, and, and that's what makes, uh, you know, all these brokerage companies, their, their profits because of how much you're trading um, every day in 
chasing returns um, on large caps uh, just by ETFs. Uh, very difficult to try and beat uh, an index like Nifty. Um, so just buying a Nifty ETF or the next 50 ETF is great. Uh, mid and small caps, there are lots of very interesting options available now. You have mutual funds, you have PMSs, you have small cases uh, across the board. You know, pick a good manager. And by good manager, we mean someone whose approach makes sense to you. Uh, returns keep changing. Returns come and go. If he's a good guy, he may have a bad year, but he'll recover next year. Right? Um, uh, on, on the international side, you know, buy an ETF. Uh, there are a whole bunch of mutual funds that offer it. Motilal, DSP, Edelweiss, lots of guys do it. Um, startups, uh, you know, one, you need a lot of money to be doing this. And two, you you need to be an expert, right? So, so again, uh, maybe go into a fund if you have, you know, a few crores to be investing. But those are broadly your equity options. Um, on the debt side, uh, you know, PF is great. Uh, like we said, don't do endowment plans, but definitely do your provident fund. Um, you know, it's a great uh, tax adjusted uh, uh, return that you end up getting. Uh, RBI now allows you to buy government bonds directly. Uh, so you're not taking any credit risk, but you're able to get great returns and uh, backed by the RBI. You can actually, they've opened it up to retail this year. So you can actually buy government bonds directly into your DMAT account. Um, of course, FD is uh, super important for your short-term needs. Uh, that was the short-term part of the portfolio, but I, there's this terrible saying, uh, which does not apply right now, cash is trash. Um, FDs in many ways are cash where you're losing money every day. So when money sits in your account, right, you feel happy, okay, oh, I'm not losing any money, at least look at the equity market, but you are. The inflation erodes your returns, right, or, or the, the value of your cash. So every day that the cash sits in your account, if inflation is at 8%, uh, you're, you're actually at minus 8% return for the year. And that's how you need to be thinking about uh, cash and how it sits in your account. Uh, right? Uh, debt mutual funds, there are guys that do take credit risk. There are guys that do only government. Um, so, so try and figure out where's the risk appetite that's sitting for you. And, and then accordingly buy this, again, for medium term at least. Um, again, junk bonds, P2P, all of this exists. Uh, but again, not recommended as a you know, chasing yield, whatever, do sensible things. Yeah. On the debt side, uh, again, just, I would just want to reiterate once on the debt side, max out your uh, provident fund for short term, keep FD for your liquidity, short term liquidity, and just put into debt mutual funds. That's the simplest thing to do and the most efficient thing to do from a tax perspective and from, you know, uh, ease of doing yeah, it. Perspective. Yeah. Uh, agree. Agree. So PF, FD, and just buy some debt mutual funds yeah. is probably the best way to do it. Yeah. Uh, gold, gold ETFs are great. Uh, digital gold is not regulated. So not something that I would recommend today, uh, but a gold ETF is amazing. Um, SGBs or sovereign gold bonds um, are, are a very, very good instrument, but you're locked in for seven years, uh, but they are very tax efficient. Just Google them. You get gold returns plus two and a half percent a year as interest on whatever you put in, plus whatever you gain on gold capital gains or whatever. Um, real estate, uh, your primary residence is not an asset, right? It's not part of your portfolio. You live in it. Um, selling it will be a very emotionally scarring decision if you need it for money. Um, but if buying in physical real assets means that you have to put a lot of money to work, uh, now you have REITs and INVITs, which are listed on the market, where uh, essentially there are these pooled vehicles where a large company will own, say, five office buildings that they give out on rent, right? Uh, so you in, are investing in a unit of those five office buildings and then the rent they collect, you get part of it. It's kind of like dividend that you get from a company, except from REITs or INVITs are the same thing, except roads and other infrastructure projects or which collect toll. Right? Um, crypto, I know a bunch of you uh, do crypto. Um, Bitcoin, Ethereum are great. There are a whole bunch of shit coins. Uh, shit coins, uh, you can put my altcoins. Maybe I should not be calling them shit. Altcoins, um, right? The, lots of them, uh, inefficient taxes, very volatile. Um, so, so maybe sub 5% of your portfolio. Uh, Nikhil and I both own a little bit of crypto, but um, you know, proceed with uh, extreme caution uh, as far as cryptos uh, go. Right? Uh, rule three, we've already covered this, but I, I had to put this up again. Uh, no to debt, term insurance, health insurance, contingency fund, and asset allocation. A uh, bunch of you asking about how to rebalance. We'll cover that again uh, at the end of this session. Yeah. Right. Some, and, uh, you know, maybe some other important rules. Yeah. So again, we talked about asset allocation, right? Put 30, 40% in equity, 30, 40% in debt, and then 10% in gold. This is actually a function of your age, right? What is the answer for a 20 year old is different for an answer for a 60 year old, right? So the younger you are, put more in equity, the older you are, put more in debt. 
this is like you know sort of simple rule so next and again it's not just about your age right it's ob- you have to be self aware of what your personality type is if risk is not something that you're comfortable with it's okay to go with more debt put more money in your pf put more money in your debt mutual fund buy those sgbs the sovereign gold funds right and that's fine again it's every time what did my neighbor do my neighbor bought some shit with crypto one year ago and it's gone up 100x that's not repeatable right so don't chase that high know what your personality type is and invest accordingly even with a very simple equal weight allocation that is better than doing nothing at all right for most of us we are sort of lazy about managing our finances we are doing nothing so the first step is do at least something and that will be better than that right so you don't need to over optimize again right perfection is the enemy of average or whatever uh, i'm butchering the saying but do something and that is going to be better than nothing at all right do not try and time the market the experts can't do it you definitely cannot do it Uh, uh you know so definitely don't try and do it uh, that I, i know the whole point of this uh, the topic of this uh, webinar was what do we do by the day this that answer is don't time the market do investments do sips and the amount of those sips or the amount of the investments should be a function of your situation right ki this is my salary this is the amount of money that i can afford to invest after clearing out my debt and after all my expenses and all of that i can spend 100 rupees to invest this month to let me invest 100 rupees that should be the decision tomorrow when you want to increase the sip it should be because your salary has been bumped up right not because you think the market has gone down or up and that's why i should increase or decrease don't look at the market look at your financial situation and then make that decision right and that's only going to be the way to uh, make money over the long period of time and again it's always a good time to start investing the only question is how much and that should be again as i said determined on your financial situation not on what you think the market is doing uh sorry again the chat is <laughs> blocking the six point more rules less emotions again exactly emotions are the enemy right that's what the behavior gap creates that's why investors make less money than the same mutual funds that they are investing in right so create some simple rules and just follow those rules right and uh, i think pretty much we have covered what we wanted to is that true kanika yeah this is yeah i guess we were just going to talk about uh, our backgrounds and yeah. uh, you know why we think uh, we should be talking about this uh, you know i, I think uh, devansh introduced uh, both of us uh, right at the beginning so i won't spend too much time on it uh, you know i'm a ca uh, cfa by training and been in investing my whole life uh, and nikhil yeah so I, i did my bachelor's in computer science from iit bombay worked for a year in credit suisse on the algo trading team then went back to do my phd again in computer science from iit bombay and then of course we are part of upside ai currently and, correct and yeah. and uh, you know what what we do at upside ai uh, you know we talked about less rules more impo- emotion uh, literally made it our careers uh, to yeah. do that um, we believe very very strongly in getting rid of human emotion when you're making investing decisions uh, so we do only rules based investing uh, essentially trying to uh, you know build systems that decide what to buy when to buy how much to buy um, so even we are not the fund manager so much as uh, you know the the systems that we build are so leverage this technology to invest uh, you know humans not not just all of us uh, even the best fund managers in the country are suboptimal investors over long periods of time you compare their returns to benchmark returns even the nifty returns 80% of them underperform over even those five year periods that we saw that is hard, hard to lose money all right so use technology um stay dynamic um you know we we've been talking so far about just static rules and sticking to them they also do well for us because we use technology we think we can do it little bit better so build those rules little more dynamically change what the asset asset allocation looks like uh, constantly be unbiased unemotional and uh, build uh, portfolios for clients using technology uh, where available as a pms format as well as on small case um yeah so so that's really what we do in our uh, approach uh, uh we have a bunch of products that we have on small case that are live uh, i won't go through each of them because i want to save time on questions but essentially you know large caps or mid caps uh, or small caps uh, or or even as we do asset allocation in in our shock proof portfolio that where we decide for you what should sit in equity debt and gold um yeah so just as an end point a uh, disproportionate percentage of your returns will be determined by your asset allocation not by which security you choose no or by 
how you time the market over long periods of time stock selection and market timing will have very little to do versus what you actually all- allocated to between assets um so so this is sort of parting thought for us and we'll you know stop now and uh, open the floor to uh, questions awesome i think this was lovely session i was i was trying to try note down but my pages got filled so yeah. it's okay <laughs> uh <laughs> Now, yeah. Aisha, can we remove the presentation so that we can start the session? Okay. Folks, if you love the session, please comment or put something in the chat so that uh, Kanika and Nikki can see that you actually enjoyed it. It was not just uh, random thing. Yeah, I think uh, someone asked how to um, rebalance again. I think they want to understand that. So maybe Nikhil, you could just talk about what we mean by rebalancing, and you know, I can go back to that page. sure it's uh, it's uh, uh simple basically let's say you had 100 rupees right and you had put in 30 rupees in nft 15 again in the asset allocation you mentioned right 100 rupees uh, we di- distributed 30 rupees in nft 15 rupees in mid cap 20 in short term debt 20% in long term debt and then 15% in gold right now the at the end of the year what will happen is not all of them will perform equally right maybe gold did a little better that year maybe uh, equity went down that year you know so the percentages will change to maybe something 20 15 whatever it'll be some different percentages so you whatever has changed you just basically whatever has gone up you sell a little bit of that and whatever has gone down you rebuy that right so you're just doing this once in a year exercise and that rebalances your portfolio effectively and wh- we talked about rebalancing when we had invested at one point right the other part is to do sips right so every every sip that you set up set up you can set up sips in you know maybe two three mutual funds so one mutual fund is a large cap mutual fund one mutual fund is a mid cap mutual fund one is a debt mutual fund and in that way also you're doing asset allocation right so we are putting 30 rupees in one 30 rupees in one 20 rupees in the other right and maybe you're bu- buying de- uh, 20 debt and something else right so that's right. how basically um, you want to asset allocate yeah uh, the, someone has had a question which is uh, if we plan to just do sips for uh, bayang had this 8 to 10 years can you just do nifty 100 and mid caps right and then put dividend back into it and forget debt and gold um and then exit when returns are above average so uh, so two three things here i'm hoping that the uh, you took something away from the uh, presentation and you're answering this question for yourself so one is short sure, um, you you want to do only equity uh, and you want to do 8 10 years uh, no problem problem will be where when there is a minus 50% here right um, will you be able to stick it out then does your risk appetite allow it today uh, you know say for example mayank say you're 25 years old and you can do it today uh, 10 years later when you're 35 and and this happens at that point and you know your family and your whole bunch of responsibilities will you be able to do it at that point which is why you know asset allocation when we give you this 30 15 20 that's not what we are saying works for everyone maybe when you're younger like we were saying you can have more in equity and then slowly slowly move away from equity as you get older uh, but the idea of why you do asset allocation is to reduce the pain on your portfolio right um, it's not just return maximization it's return maximization and risk minimization uh, right that's really what you're trying to do uh, and then returns above average you know you're saying 20% today but what if the nifty has uh, you know 3 years of 3% returns so uh, what is above average at that point how will you make that decision and, uh, and will you be able to it's a very practical situation that we saw last two years right anyone who invested in april 2020 he was suddenly getting great returns right so 3 months later he could have decided oh i have gotten super normal returns right i should have these returns so i get in 2 3 years i have already gotten it so let me exit but that that bull run continued for you a further 6 9 months right so you never know how long these runs will continue and then you'll miss out on that and that's ha- happened to so many people that's actually happened right it's so happened, right? that's why yes. coming back to that same point and you know ki we all know over time nifty will give you 13 14% return but that doesn't mean ki every time you it gets 14% then you exit because you don't know it, it, it's very lumpy right it's 40% at a time it's 50% at a time right so you can't time that those things at all correct uh, where to uh, add your contingency fund uh, fds and liquids um, a liquid mutual fund or fixed deposits those those are those are good enough that's where uh, you should be putting some of it but it's 6 months so it it can't be your biggest asset unless of course your financial situation needs it to be Uh, can you can you put down the presentation so that we can? I think there are a lot of questions coming in. Uh, yeah. So I think Faizan asks, oh, why not to? Sure. Yeah, why not to invest in small cap because that is uh, where the fund manager's research and useful, right? If we were to invest in large cap, we can directly go to stocks. What are your thoughts on this? 
Yeah, so generally uh, agreed when it comes to large cap, as Kanika, we even talked about it when we showed the assets, right? When it comes to large caps, it's best to just go to ETFs or, uh, you know, index mutual funds, which is basically buying just the Nifty, right? They're not, you know, uh, picking and choosing. They're just buying whatever is there in the Nifty. That's the best to do for buy, uh, buying large caps. And when it comes to small caps and mid caps, you can, you know, uh, go with specific managers, specific mutual funds, because there is, as you said, right, there's a better chance for some uh, better returns to be generated. So that's definitely the approach on large caps. You should not look at uh, managers. You should just buy the index funds typically for small caps and mid caps. You can go for manager specific uh, mutual funds or PMS or small case, whatever the instrument you're going to. I think we are almost uh, five minutes away. Baljit ji, we'll just take four or five more questions. I think Deepak asked, he loved the session by the way. And he asked the question, which is preferred, Nifty 50 or Nifty 100? Uh, again, no preference as such, right? Nifty 100 is just slightly more diversified. If you buy a Nifty 100, it's as it is going to be heavily weighted towards Nifty 50. So either either way is fine. It's uh, broader. Maybe, yeah, so, correct. What we mean by that is, you know, when you look at any index, right? Say the Nifty 100, um, how is the weightage in that between those 100 stocks decided? It's not equal weighted. Yeah. It is weighted by market cap. So if your market cap is higher than another company, the weight of that company, like Reliance will have a weight, which would be way more than the hundredth company in, in the Nifty 100, right? So the Nifty 50 uh, ends up being a disproportionate percentage of your Nifty 100 in terms of weights. So they end up doing very, very similar. That's why there's also a Nifty Next 50, which has been launched, uh, which is the 51 to 100 stock of the Nifty. So maybe, you know, that's another product that gives you little broader exposure uh, than just the Nifty or the Nifty 100. Yeah. So again, there, there's no one right answer, right? You can buy Nifty 50, you can buy Nifty 100, you can buy half of Nifty 50 and a half of next 50 as Kanika mentioned. Uh, again, as long as you're systematic and just follow the rule, that's, that's fine. Uh, I think Ayush asked, unlike a DMAT account, which has a which has, which is protected by NSDL and CDSL, there's no way to protect our money in the crypto wallets, right? Recently, a few crypto investing companies have wound up their operations as users on the platform are facing issues, right? Is there a known risk? We cannot do anything about it or what, what, yeah. what's your... So when it about? comes to crypto, unless it's your wallet, again, yeah. this might be technical, people might not be know uh, what I'm talking about, but to those who know, unless it's your wallet, you have custody, it is not your crypto, right? If it's sitting on some website account, right, uh, or balance, that company can shut down tomorrow and you'll have no recourse. Government is not going to get your funds, right? So let's say you're buying Bitcoin on some website, transfer that Bitcoin to your own personal wallet, which is on your machine or on your mobile or whatever, right? Then it's your Bitcoin. Otherwise, there is no safety. There is yeah. no risk. Not and I think wallet, recently the exchanges are not allowed, but Nikhil, recently exchanges are not allowing you to remove that crypto from the exchange ka wallet and put it on a private wallet either. So okay, that's, so that, that's so the that other thing. Ju that just yeah. highlights the risk in all of this, right? So that's why we exactly. stay away from it. The regulatory wise, there is clarity. Right. Okay. No, I think Apoor asked if if I read, if the redemption of SGB, like you know, Sovereign Gold Funds after the maturity, maturity date, then no tax liability on it or do we still have to pay for it? The yeah, so that's the that's the sort of draw of that instrument, right? That there, there is no capital gains that typically you would have to pay, but if you hold it till maturity, then there is no tax liability uh, on the gold uh, uh, capital gain. On the two and a half percent that you get year to year, you have to pay marginal normal tax rates. I think this uh, somebody by the name of Tab B asked the question, which I also wanted to ask. Like, would would upside AI like? Is this upside here? Like we'll take it, take our money, and you guys would figure it out, or how, how would that go? Like uh, right now, let's say if you were to invest, it's a very complicated exercise alongside working, right? So how does that work? Uh, if you can throw some lights. Sure. So as Kanika mentioned, we operate as a PMS and as a small case. So in the case of a PMS, uh, there we yeah we would take your money. The money would be sitting in a DMAT account and the instruments, the securities we will execute, we will do everything. The DMAT account will be in your name. It will be everything in your name, but we will take the headache, right? We will operate it day in, day out. We will do the rebalancing, all of that, that we were talking about, right? We will be doing all of that. Uh, but that PMS, again, this is SEBI registered. We have a SEBI license, but the, it's only for HNI. So the minimum ticket size is 50 lakh rupees there, right? So it's not available for everybody. The other product that we have is a small case, which is advisory. Uh, which, are, which is research, right? Uh, we, we are not uh, going to execute it on your behalf. We will tell you what to, you know, this is our research, these are the stocks. And that's what Kanika showed on one slide, right? We have several products there. 
So again, it will be executed in your DMAT account, but you will have to do the execution. You can look up small case, you can look up our website and you'll get more details onto it, how it operates. But the basic idea is everything will be done in your uh, DMAT account and you will have to execute. We will tell you the research. We will give you the, the research. Uh, is that right, Kanika? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, awesome. So all the folks, uh, I think who, who has dropped up as well, we'll be sending out an email along with the presentation for today so that you can use upside AI as well. Like I'll, I'll for sure sign up because I don't want to invest my time on other things. Uh, awesome. So I, I think we'll take two more, three more questions, right? Uh, Vinkte Shah's interesting in Godrej and Zomato and now Vipro is a gold. Good idea. No idea. Again, we have actually no idea uh, on a stock specific and we are not being flippant or whatever. That's exactly the reason uh, Upside AI uses technology. Uh, we genuinely don't know stock-wise, you know, what will do well, not do well. Uh, who knows? Got it. Got it. Uh, I think Abhishek asked, do you help investing in currencies as well? Currency not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, Apoorva asked, how much minimum stock in our portfolio as there is more, as there are more than 5,000 listed in companies in stock market, right? So in, yeah. in our stock portfolio, obviously that depends on the quantum of money we are putting it, but again, how much, uh, like, let's say if we have 10,000, how many stock portfolio should it be? And you know that's all. So again, it, sh it should not be a function of the amount of money you have, right? In general, even if you have five lakhs or even if you have five crores or if you even have 500 crores, does not mean if you have 500 crores, you should be investing into all the companies in the stock market, right? It should be, uh, again, as Kanika mentioned, do not invest for 99% of the people watching this, you should not directly invest in the stock market because that's not your day job, right? Uh, you will not be able to balance that with your uh, real life, right? With your uh, normal work life. Uh, so mutual funds, typically, they will invest in 50 to 100 companies. Uh, we typically invest in about 10 to 25 companies. We have a more concentrated portfolio. Uh, again, there's no one size fits all answer. Uh, to that yeah, question. but but to uh, the other, so don't buy direct stocks. Um, large caps buy an ETF. Uh, mid and small caps, uh, you can find a manager or a small case or anything that you know suits your way of thinking or that you understand or you 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 agree with. Um, that's that's how you should probably think about splitting it. Uh, not buying stocks directly. Uh, I think Mayank asked, can we get a promo code for the subscribe for the upside uh... AI? I, sure. I, I, I think that Kanika, yeah, sure. Work. Maybe we can create one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll I create think, one uh, just for Nova. Uh, yeah, Nova yeah. <laughs> we'll be reaching out to all Great. the people so, who are not joined in as well. So yeah, definitely. Let's just do that. Yeah, we'll create one. Uh, so and I so think we'll Nova create will one. Send uh, one yeah. huh, and maybe we should create one with Shockproof. We've talked about asset allocation so much. Uh, yeah. So that's our asset allocation product. Um, uh, you know, and maybe the Devansh will send it out. It'll just be Nova uh, or something yeah. like that. Uh, it'll be a sure. yeah. code for you guys. So uh, I think Tabby, Tabby again asked like minimum ticket size of 50 lakh. That's for PMS. That's not for uh, small case products. So correct, skip correct. that question. Uh, I think the last question we'll yeah. take from Mayank is the Titans, Emerging Blue Chip and Shockproof offered by Upside AI are all invest in like unique portfolio and users can invest in all three to cover uh, the aspect and achieve diversification? Question mark. Right? Correct. Absolutely. That's the idea. They're all different products. They're all different uh, exposures, high risk, low risk, medium risk. And the entire idea is, you know, depending on user profile, what they want to do. And yeah, if you're doing a mix, uh, mix of all of them, you're ach achieving that diversification. That's the entire point. Yeah. Uh, I think Jogesh is asking what is NFT and how to invest in it? Uh, you can, you can <laughs> choose to, it's a very large question, of course, but uh, I, I think- Short Jogesh answer is that... uh, stay away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like not awesome. for this session, <laughs> yeah. NFT. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Madhume, we'll be sharing a presentation and along with the uh, the coupon code for the for for the small case. So awesome. I think this was a great session. Thanks a lot, folks, uh, for joining in. And my colleague has shared a link for the next future sessions as well. And we are having one more session with Nikhil and Kanika. I think on 14th. Feel free to ask your friends, family, and others as well if they if they found it useful. Thanks, folks. Uh, I think we are running one poll. Let's just. If you can help us out, that would be great. Oops, did I close it? No, no, no. no. It's still running. Don't worry. Ah, thank you. Oh, 27 percent people want financial wellness session. I'm pretty sure Nikhil and Karina will invite you more often now. Yeah, always uh, happy to. This is a great, great session, great questions.
and honestly that's what we see even with our peer groups or whatever right uh, people are way too lazy about their financial well being uh, so yeah awesome thanks a lot folks uh, for joining in I, in, the, in the like in the meanwhile i've shared a twitter link as well if you loved the session feel free to comment about that on on your twitter or the platforms thanks a lot Bye -bye. Yeah, Thanks please everyone. tag Upside AI as well, um, so we can see the <laughs> comments if you guys put them up on Twitter. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for the kind words.